Hello everyone, this is Sergei Sputnikov from Ushanka Show and let's learn something new about life in the Soviet Union. Recently I got a question from one of my viewers from India, out of all places, how cool is that? What was language situation in the USSR? Was there imposition of Russian over other languages or did other languages have importance in their respected areas? I already touched this topic in a couple of my videos, one of them relations between Russians and Ukrainians in the USSR during the 80s and link will be below in the comment section, as well as this one. So, am I Russian, Soviet, or Ukrainian? And in today's video we're going to talk about so-called Russification, Russificatia, and especially the Russification of Ukraine during the Soviet Union times. So what is the Russification? It's a form of cultural assimilation where non-Russians give up their culture and language for Russian culture and language. It could be voluntarily or involuntary. Russification is a form of linguistic imperialism. It refers to ethnic and language policies implemented by the Russian authorities during the Tsarist Empire and the Soviet Union. And today we're going to talk about Soviet Union. But before we begin, I would like to explain you something very important. Soviet government didn't try to make Ukrainians Russians. As you look at this poster, it's 300 years since the reunion of Ukraine with Russia. That's when Nikita Khrushchev transferred Crimea Peninsula from Russia to Ukraine. And on the bottom it says Bratskaya Druzhbya, Nasha Sila. In brotherly friendom is our strength. So there's two guys on this poster. The one on the right in Vishavanka short is obviously Ukrainian. And the one on the left, does he look Russian? There's nothing, like no Russian national costume reference to him. He's just your average proletariat or engineer. So there's no national image on the guy on the left, although it's, it's Russian. And Ukrainian has Vishavanka. So this is what they were trying to do, turn Ukrainians into Russian-speaking Soviets. And you could see this strange presentation of the Russian nationality in the Soviet-era posters quite often. Like here, it's the quote from the Soviet anthem, Slavsia Otechstva Nasha Svobodnaya Druzhby Narodov Nadezhny Aplod. You might recognize that tune. So glory to our motherland, blah, blah, blah. So from the left you have a girl, looks like she's from Uzbekistan, you have a guy who is Georgian, then once again there's a guy that has no national identity, but everyone knew he was Russian, then you have a Ukrainian girl, and you have a guy from Belarus. They have a similar Vishivanka style shirts, they probably had different name. So once again, there is no Russian Russian identity, he's just a city guy wearing a suit and a tie. Here's another beautiful example. So here representation of all 15 Soviet Socialist Republics of the Soviet Union. So you got a map of the Soviet Union background and Dazdrastvoit Soyuz Sovietskih Socialistiskih Republik, Velika Socialistiska Otechistva, Nerushimaya Mnogonacionalnaya Sodružstva Bratskih Narodov, my goodness, Živoje Vaplašenje Principa Proletarskova Internacionalizma. So glory to the Soviet Union, uh, the great uh, socialist fatherland, unbreakable uh, multinational uh, friendship of brother uh, peoples, uh, the living, uh, anyways, uh, the living thing uh, of the principle of uh, pluritarian internationalism. So once again, if you look, there's a 15 flags of 15 Soviet republics, 14 national costumes, and the guy in the middle who is Russian, has no Russian identity whatsoever. And similar situation existed even in the Stalin's era. So this is the poster, uh, people carrying flags that says Privet Velikomu Stalinu. So, hello, great Stalin, in different languages. And you may already guess, the very first guy is the Russian. Then you got Ukrainian girl and so on. And once again, glory to the brotherly Soviet Union and the great friendship of the nations of the USSR. And since the question was asked by my viewer from India, here's the poster about Soviet-Indian friendship and it says Indici i Ruskie bratia. Indians and Russians are brothers. But the Russian guy has no Russian identity holding a Soviet flag and just wearing normal everyday office dress but he is Russian. There is another important moment you need to keep in mind while uh, talking about Russification during the Soviet era. The Bolsheviks called Tsar Russia 
тюрьма народов, a prison of nations. This term was coined by Vladimir Lenin back in 1914, and it was heavily used in their fight against Tsar regime. So when Vladimir Putin, during his interview with Tucker Carlson, claimed that he had no idea why Lenin wanted Soviet republics to have a right to leave the Soviet Union when Soviet Union was created back in 1922, he neither lying or he had no clue. Most likely he was lying. Because Lenin claimed that nations have the right to self-determination. He even wrote the whole book on this topic. And of course, it's a different question if the Bolsheviks and Lenin really meant it. But the whole idea was to promote Soviet Union as a different type of country where republics can come and go as they wish. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place. Let's go back to the topic of Russification of Ukraine. I believe this diagram will tell you everything you need to know about Russification in Ukraine before and after the collapse of the Soviet Union. So the vertical red line is 1991. Diagram begins in 1950 and it ends in 2011. So orange color is Russian language being used as the main language in the school and blue color it's Ukrainian. What I mean, like all the subjects being taught either in Russian language, so math, physics, everything, or in Ukrainian. And of course, since it's Ukraine, it also had a Ukrainian language as the lesson. And the statistics are quite impressive. So in 1950, about 20% of schools in the Soviet Ukraine were teaching in Russian language and 80% in Ukrainian. As you see, due to the laws introduced since then, was a steady decline of Ukrainian-speaking schools in Ukraine and steady climb of Russian-speaking schools. I was born in 1971, so I went to school at the age of seven in 1978, and by that time, there was pretty much 50-50 between Russian-speaking schools and Ukrainian-speaking schools in Ukraine. And I believe the majority of Ukrainian-speaking schools were located in small towns and villages, while in large cities like Kyiv, Kharkiv, Donetsk, and so on, most schools were Russian speaking. For example, in my 10 years while I was a student, I went to three different schools, number 69, number 223, and number 254. And my parents picked those schools because of location, the closest school to our place. All three schools were Russian speaking schools. I even had no idea how many Ukrainian speaking schools we had in Kyiv. All schools I went to were Russian speaking. And as we look at this graph again, from mid of 1980s till the end of the Soviet Union, there were more Russian speaking schools in Ukraine than Ukrainian speaking schools. It's quite impressive. But here's the real kicker. According to the final Soviet era census, which happened in 1989, in the Soviet Ukraine, there was 72% of Ukrainians, 37 and a half million, 22% of Russians, 11 million, and 2.6 million of other nationalities. So 72% were Ukrainians, 22% were Russians, but there were more Russian-speaking schools than Ukrainian schools in Ukraine. And this graph shows percentage of students being taught in Russian or in Ukrainian in schools. So kind of similar graph from 50s to the end of 80s. And once again, you see somewhere around 1985, that's when the Russian language took over Ukrainian language in Ukraine. And I mentioned many times that I'm a perfect example of this situation. I'm a Russian speaking Ukrainian who always considers himself Soviet of the Ukrainian descent. I was fluent in Ukrainian, except some odd words that once in a while would trip me. So I would use Russian word, for example, like, a word for brick. In Russian it's kirpich, in Ukrainian it's tseglina. And if you don't use those words often, they will trip you. You'll use Russian word instead of Ukrainian word. So there were several of those that would constantly trip me. Otherwise, I was always fluent in Ukrainian, although my first language was always Russian. At the same time, I was quite annoyed when during the international hockey games, foreign commentators would call Soviet team Russian team, and I was like, no, it's not the Russian team, it's the Soviet team. And I also need to mention about my parents. So my mother, Elena, and my father, Nikolai, when they moved to Kiev from their villages, so that happened around 1965, 66, 
They spoke Ukrainian in their villages. By moving to Kiev, they switched to Russian because that was the language to talk. And if you talk Ukrainian in Kiev, in the capital of Ukraine, so that's kind of like you're a redneck. You came out of the boondocks. So young people were switching to Russian language. And here's another instant graph about Russification. This about mass media. It's amount of newspapers published in Ukrainian, which is blue, and Russian, orange. So in 1950, Russian language newspapers 220 in Ukraine and 972 Ukrainian. In 1963, huge jump. 1600 Russian language newspapers versus 765 Ukrainian newspapers. A while back I recorded a video about my family newspaper subscriptions back in the Soviet days. Link also will be in the comment section. And out of three newspapers that we like to subscribe, or my parents like to subscribe, Trud, the labor, was a newspaper published in Moscow, so it was in Russian language. Soviet Sport, Sovietsky Sport, was also in Russian. It was also published in Moscow and reprinted in Kyiv. The only local newspaper we subscribed to was Vichernyi Kyiv, Evening Kyiv. That one was published in both languages, in Russian and in Ukrainian. I believe... My parents subscribed into Ukrainian version, I'm not positive. So even local Ukrainian newspaper, Vichernyi Kyiv, Evening Kyiv, was published in Russian as well as Ukrainian. I'm positive similar processes of Russification were going on in the other Soviet republics, but the most successful Russification occurred in Ukraine and Belarus, since we're Slavic languages, pretty close to Russian language, a lot of similar words. But I don't have any statistics. One of the tools, like initial step for the Russification, was switching alphabet from Latin to Cyrillic, which happened, for example, in Moldova. At that time it was called Moldavska Soviet Socialist Republic. That was a part of Romania that was taken by Stalin. Similar thing happened in Kazakhstan. And even in Mongolia, they were writing. I think they may be switching now, but I remember... Mongol words written in pretty much like Cyrillic letters. Another important, although sneaky, tool of introducing Russian language into Ukraine was Soviet Hollywood. There were many movies where Ukrainian-speaking people were portrayed as stupid. A classic example of such a movie is Zelone Furgon, a green wagon, filmed in 1983 out of all places in Odessa, movie studio. The main character of this movie, Volodya, a naive Russian-speaking young man who becomes like a sheriff in a small village, which is Tkovy, and his helper is Ukrainian-speaking, kind of stupid, but sneaky, older guy, and together they fight in crime among Ukrainian-speaking, sneaky moonshiners. But if you are in the Soviet era movies, this is actually a good comedy to watch and I'll provide the link also in the comment section below. But let's take a look at this graph again. So after 1991, when Soviet Union collapsed and Kiev decoupled from Moscow rule, Ukrainian language returned into Ukrainian schools and in 20 years, between 1991 and 2011, we were back to Russian language schools 16% and Ukrainian language schools 82% in Ukraine. And that's what Putin and some Russian-speaking people in Ukraine really hate, this new trend of Ukraine becoming Ukrainian. They don't want to learn Ukrainian language, they don't want their children to learn Ukrainian language, which blows my mind. You live in Ukraine, there's nothing wrong to know another language. And I believe that the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania have the similar problem with Russian-speaking people. Russians that moved there during the Soviet days, they settled there, and they don't want to move back to Russia. They prefer those countries, but they don't want to learn local languages. And before I wrap up the story about Russification of Ukraine and Ukrainian language, I would like to mention another interesting phenomena, so-called surzhik. Surzhik. There should be a proper translation of the word surzhik into English, proper terminology, I couldn't find it. But this is the result of cross-pollination. So there's areas where... Both languages are heavily used, Russian and Ukrainian in this case. And then you start borrowing words from the other language in your language. In this case, Surzhik, it's when Ukrainian-speaking people heavily use Russian words in their speech. And here's the map of Ukraine, and this shows you percentage of Surzhik language. As you see, the heaviest is 
northern central Ukraine, that's one of Kyiv is and Chernigiv region. So 21.7% people speak Ukrainian with heavy use of Russian words. It's even worse than, for example, in the East, where not many people speak Ukrainian, they mostly speak Russian, so Surzhik is not that popular. And the lowest, of course, in the far west, it's only 2.5%. And of course, the Surzhik phenomena is not unique to Ukrainian language in relates with Russian language. I experienced the same situation in Michigan while I worked with the Mexican crew picking apples. They used a lot of English words kind of made into the Spanish sounding words instead of camion truck, they were saying troca, la troca or el troca. Picking, they were saying picar, although in Spanish picar is fishing. So el troca, picar, there was a lot of this type of surgic words, English words, they were introduced into their Spanish. One of the classic examples of surgic word is once again, it's a truck for some reason. In Ukrainian language, load is vantage, so the truck should be vantazhivka, but we used mostly gruzovik, which is pretty much direct borrowing from Russian gruzovik. Similarly, Ukrainian language affected Russian-speaking population, because I was a Russian-speaking Ukrainian, I would never call sugar beets svekla, we always call it buryak, even speaking Russian. Similarly, instead of trapinka, it's like the the path, we would say stezka, stezka. So that's Ukrainian word that migrated into the Russian language in Ukraine. Stezka instead of trapinka and buryak instead of svekla. And of course, I need to mention so-called southern Ukrainian accent, yuzhno ukrainsky accent. That's when people from Ukraine and as well as the Krasnodar region of Russia, where originally a lot of people from Ukraine moved to, uh, we speak Russian language with specific accent, and a classic example to recognize that accent, we say что instead of что. So our ч sound is way softer, it's almost like we say in English with southern Ukrainian accent Chicago instead of Chicago. And speaking of accents, even the Ukrainian language had different regional accents. For example, we all can recognize people from Western Ukraine. We always call them Zapadensi, the Westerners, because the way they speak Ukrainian is different. Several words are different. They call bicycles rover instead of velociped, vatra instead of vohoň, so it's for fire. So there's a, quite a few words that use that borrow maybe from Polish or other languages, and just the way they speak is different. And on the topic of Ukrainian language, the most embarrassing part, in my, at least in my opinion, was the fact that Ukrainians elected two presidents, Leonid Kuchma and then later Yanukovych, who could barely speak Ukrainian. That was the most embarrassing part when your president struggles to speak your language. Or if they speak Ukrainian, they constantly throw in Russian words. It's not really surgic, it's just a real poor knowledge of Ukrainian language. And those guys managed, I believe with help of Kremlin, to become Ukrainian presidents. And now I want to show you a short clip from 2011 when President Yanukovych struggles for nine seconds to come up with Ukrainian word Yelinka, which means evergreen, and after that struggle he still couldn't find that word in his mind and says Russian Yolka. Пикетувальників сьогодні вже встановлюється новорічна. Йолка і люди почнуть дуже-дуже скоро святкувати Новий рік. Okay, Shanovni Druzi, my dear friends, it's all I can tell you about this silent struggle between Russian and Ukrainian languages in Ukraine. If you watched all the video and enjoyed it, please make sure you still subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like it, post your comment, and we'll talk to you soon. Do pobachenia, goodbye.